Well, hello everyone, and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer, where we finally get to find out why these girls are so shocked. At last I decided to come closer, but the USSR, as I called her in my mind, jumped to the first girl and started telling her something while sawing the air. The other girl, in return, seemed confused, looked down, and made no reply. Didn't try to saw anything. I'd have probably considered to observe their amusing dialogue. But the USSR suddenly pulled something out of her pocket and started shaking it in front of her, the first girl's face. It was long, it was pink, I have no idea what it was. This something turned out to be a grasshopper. squealed the first girl. She must not... She must be not too keen of insects as she instantly rushed towards where Lenin presumably made his speech about the accomplished workers and peasants revolution. That's to say, towards the square. The USSR glanced at me, grinned playfully, and dashed after her. Not a bad start of the day. Perhaps not for the grasshopper. I have absolutely no clue where I am. Besides that, there are some kids here, role-playing pioneers. I suppose it could be worse. There could be some pioneers here, role-playing kids. And as far as I can tell, this place is located thousands of kilometers away from my home. It might even be in a different reality, in which case it could be quite close. I don't know yet. And this, indeed, was a reality. And no, I have no idea what that means either. I mean, everything around me seemed so real, if a little embellished, that I was starting to fall into thinking that, in fact, my previous life could have been just a dream. What should I do now? Traditionally, pinch myself. Ellipsis. I was picking the cracks in the tiles which paved the pathway and stared aimlessly at the club's building. Just a few more seconds before I've come up with some decision. That's when I recalled myself rolling in the glass, weeping. I cringed in disgust. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy, I tell you. Perhaps it's another instinct when... All energy for whimpering and self-pitying is used up. The body either goes into hibernation or mobilizes its reserves. Mine seemed to have chosen the second option, possibly because it wasn't tired, because out of the blue I got this determination to figure out what was going on. And in order to do that I had to act like a man, like a human, human, to maintain the dignity of a representative of my own world. I followed the path to the left and to the right of which stood small cabins, apparently homes for the local pioneers. Actually, they looked quite cosy from the outside. Even though I was born in the Soviet Union, I have never been part of its children organizations, neither the pioneers nor even the young October children. I imagined a da the daily life of a typical pioneer camp a bit differently, huge barracks with long rows of metal bunks. Wake up call at six o'clock, played by a siren, one minute to make your bed, then joining the formation at the drill square. Or oh, wait! Hark, what through yonder window breaks? Could I be confusing it with something else? I was suddenly hit on the back. I staggered, but remained on my feet, turned around, and prepared to become an, a hero on... Become an hero on uh, become a hero while fighting for my life. I disregard these words and use my own. But all I found was another girl standing before me. If indeed girl on that was. My mouth hung open in surprise. My tongue almost hit the floor. It'll pick your jaw up off the floor. 
I closed my mouth. Perhaps I should have withdrawn my tongue first. That hurt. The same pioneer uniform, but it looked, let's say, provocative. Indeed, let's say, hubba hubba hubba, the way she was wearing it. Like all girls I'd met here before, this one was rather cute. But her overly arrogant expression killed any desire to get to know her better. Eh, so you're new here? Ellipsis. Don't you ellipsis me. Fine. See ya. She dashed a threatening glance at me and walked past. I waited for the pioneer girl to turn to the corner. Who knows what else she might have been up to. The most interesting thing that even this hostile girl seemed completely normal to me. She did not give the feeling of some deadly danger. Just wait until you turn your back on her. Except maybe the danger of getting punched in the nose. At last, I managed to make it into the square. It took three weeks. In the end, we ate the horses. There was no Lenin on an armoured car, though one could really expect something like that after all that had happened. Instead, however, a monument to a certain comrade towered in the middle of the square. The letters of the pedestal read gender. Must be some big figure of the party. There's some small benches at the sides. It's quite cosy here. Where did that girl tell me to go? To the left or to the right? To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the top, to the bottom, to the front, to the back. And why am I going there anyway? Come to think of it, who am I? What am I doing here? What is my what is my motivation for this scene? Ah, all right. I've decided to pretend to be normal. Can't you tell I'm normal? I'm very normal. So, to the right. Through a small grove. Up the up the hill, down the other side, through the magical num num forest, and to a pier. I must have taken a wrong turn. E wrong way. I turned towards the voice. The first girl stood before me. Fortunately, I remember from beforehand what colour her eyes were, because I certainly wasn't looking at them. I did tell you to turn left from the square. Where are you gone? She changed from her pioneer uniform into a bikini. Which is strange, because you'd think she'd stay a girl. But, there you go. Oh, I still haven't introduced myself. My name's Slavia. Actually, my full name's Slaviana, but everyone calls me Slavia. So can you. Uh, woman, yeah. I still felt a bit confused, so I could not come up with more meaningful answers. And what's your name? I felt like she could see right through me. Uh, I am um, yeah, Semyon. Nice to meet you, Semyon. Oh, what? I'm almost done here. Could you wait here a minute? I'm going to go change, and then we can go to uh, Olga Dimitrovina together. Agreed? Agreed. I'll stand here and just watch you walk away. Um, sorry, I'll stand here and wait for you to get changed. She ran off after those words, and I sat here on the pier and let my feet hang into the water. I was wearing heavy winter boots, but in such weather there's nothing wrong with getting my feet wet. Furthermore, it let me cool myself a little. Looking at the river, I was brainstorming and processing everything that has happened. If this is some sign of conspiracy, it's a weird one, even too friendly at times. No, it really looks more like a random event. Some entirely incomprehensible random event involving blondes in bikinis. Shall we go? Slavia was standing beside me, dressed in pioneer uniform again. Let's go. Sorry, wrong voice. Let's go. I've been waiting here for a very short time, but of all the people I met, she looks the least suspicious. However, this fact was already suspicious by itself. We walked to the square. The USS guy who'd hit, girl who'd hit me on the back 
was there chasing each other. Let me try that one again. The USSR girl and the girl who'd hit me on the back was there chasing each other. Is it some kind of game they were playing? Okiana, stop running. I'll tell every everything to Olga Dimitrina. I'm sorry, I have to do this voice. Aye, aye, Captain. I decided not to question Slavia for a while about what was going on and about the local residents. Better first reach this mysterious Olga Dimitrovina. Sounds like she's the boss here. We were walking past the rows of almost identical cabins, some of which looked like fat beer barrows, while others looked more like household sheds. Finally, Shavra... Ah, finally, Slavia stopped in front of a smallish one-story cabin. It looked like an artist's painting. The fading paint, chipping here and there with age, was sparking in the sun. The window shutters, slightly ajar, were swaying in the wind, almost unnoticeably, and large li and lilac bushes were growing on the sides. It seemed as if this ramshackle hut was drowning in the velvet-purple storm, and the lilacs, like some elemental force, were inexorably destroying the troop leader's house. What are you standing for? Let's go! Slavia shook me out of my daydreams. And stop teasing Lena already. Lena? Sounds like there's someone inside. Indeed, a moment later the door swung open and Oleana ran out and dashed past with the same mischievous grin. I think it was surgically implanted. The pigtail girl went out next. Don't get upset about her, Lena. So, her name is Lena. Got to be thankful it's not Rena, at least. And no, I don't know which what that means. Can somebody tell me in the comments, please? But I don't. She didn't finish her phrase, blushed, and quickly headed towards the square. For some reason I felt like turning round and following her with my eyes, or at least my tongue, but Slavia said, Come. We entered the cabin. Inside it looked something similar to what I was imagining. Two beds, a table, a couple of chairs, a simple carpet on the floor, a wardrobe. Nothing special, but at the same time it felt home-like and cosy, though this room was almost the same state of disorder as my own flat. A girl standing near the window appeared to be about 25 years old. The nature had obviously grifted her with a pretty face and a good body, and legs that went all the way down to the floor. At least one thing can keep you happy in this pandemonium. The locals are beautiful. So, you're finally here. Excellent. My name is Olga Detrimovina. I am the camp leader. Nice to meet you. I'm Semyon. I decided to talk as if I weren't surprised by anything that was going on. She came closer. We've been waiting for you since the early morning. You've been waiting? For me? For little old me? Yes, of course. And when does the next bus come? Because I... And why do you need it? Yeah, right. Why would I need it? Guess I shouldn't ask directions. The people here may react to them. Unlike what I'd prefer. I doubt I'd get answers. No reason. Just curious. By the way, where are we exactly? Our mailing address, I mean. I wanted to send a letter to my parents to tell them I got here all fine. For some reason, I had the desperate idea that if I played along, I would find something out. Oh, but your parents gave me a call just an hour ago. Sent their regards to you. Now that's a surprise. So, can I call them? Because I forgot to tell them something before I left. I left the cat plugged in. No. She gave me a sweet and natural smile while hiding a dagger behind her back. Why not? We don't have a phone here. You may never leave. Ellipsis. 
Then how could my parents call here? I've just come back from the district's central town. It's where I talk to them. Now, ah, now, that's how it is. And can I somehow get to the town? I'm not a number, I'm a free man! No. She kept the same smile. I don't know who she got it from. It seemed to work all right with her, though. Why not? Because the, the next bus only comes in a week. I decided not to inquire how the troop leader managed to get here and back. I would get no answer anyway. All this time, Slavia was standing next to me and seemed to find nothing odd in our conversation. Oh, we need to find a uniform for you. I've got absolutely no desire to put on pioneer shorts or wear the ridiculous red neckerchief. In fact, ladies, you shouldn't either take them off. However, wearing winter clothes in summer is not a great idea either. Right, thank you. I wonder if I'm the only one here who finds it strange that someone's wearing a coat and winter boots in such heat. Righty right, I'll be off then. And you can get yourself acquainted with the camp. Don't forget to come to dinner this evening. Having said that, she walked out of the cabin. No, walked is not the right word. She left it as she rushed out. I was alone now with Slavia. You, me, that bed. I must go too. Got things to do. Have to walk around the camp a bit. Have a walk, look around the camp a bit. Use the words in the right order. See you in the evening. There was no catch or menace to that. Then, in this reality, in the person of Slavia, becomes more and more something to be fond of. For the first time today, I realised that I didn't want to say ellipsis at that point, and it was awfully hot here. Though, obviously, my winter clothes were to blame for that. I took off my coat and dropped it onto the bed. My pullover went after. I was now wearing only the shirt. Unfortunately, it was Slavia's shirt and it didn't fit very well. Ah, that's much better. All I could do now was follow the advice and go look around the camp. I'll try to find something else in the meantime. Passing the local residential district, I saw a pioneer guy coming my way. And it really was a pioneer guy, not a pioneer girl. Apparently there were men even in this Amazon's kingdom. Hello, you must be new here. You must be Semyon, right? And how do you... No, back off. Everyone knows me already. I'm electronic, by the way. The real one. You can call me that. Electromic was a popular robot character appearing in a popular so Soviet film and book series. He looked like an exact copy of a school kid called Sergei Cheeskov. Electronic, the real one. Things were going from crazy to completely insane. Ha 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 ha! All right. Alania calls me Cheese. Cheese. Why not cauliflower? Because my last name is Cheesecov. I see. Let me show you around. Now you walk in front and enjoy the view. I accepted his offer as I as it would have been much longer to get to know this place alone. I didn't walk in front. Fine, let's go. We came back to the square again. As if there were no other places to go in this camp. Which is a lie, there's at least two other drawings. Lena was sitting in one of the benches reading some book. Electronic confidently approached her. Hello Lena, meet the new guy, Semyon. He started briskly. Hello. Well, you could say we've met, in a way. Yes. She looked away from the book for a moment, glanced at me, blushed, and went back to reading, as if not noticing we were still there. Alright, let's go on. I was at first surprised that meeting this girl was reduced to a couple of words, but 
I thought it was better that way. Electronics vigorous activity, where I did not fit well with Lena's shyness. Let's go. Next, we came to a building which I instantly identified as a canteen, possibly because it had the words canteen written on the front of it. And this here? I know, this is where you consume organic food. Or possibly that car. Yeah, something like that. On the canteen's porch there stood the unfriendly girl who'd hit me on the back earlier. And we'll find out what she has to say next week. That time is up. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. I've been Simon Parsons. This has been Everlasting Summer. I'm so enjoying reading this. Thank you and good night. Good night.